Hello fun people, today we are exploring the tragic full story of Experiment 625, who would eventually be known as Ruben. You see, Experiment 625's life began within the laboratory of Jumba Jukiba. He was secretly developed by Jumba and financed by the evil Dr. Jacques von Hamsterveel under the nose of the Galactic Alliance. Now, what's special about 625 is that he is the last failed experiment before the creation of Stitch. He was designed to possess all of Stitch's powers, including being fireproof, bulletproof, and he could think faster than a supercomputer. He could see in the dark and lift 3,000 times his own size and he even had advanced language programming, but his only instinct wasn't to destroy everything he touched. Instead, he accidentally was programmed to be lazy. That meant he avoided physical combat or using his powers, and even when he was placed into structured situations, he refused to apply himself. I took a class in advanced applied blasting. Hey. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. 625 was far from the ultimate evil monster Jumba hoped he would be, but he wasn't necessarily completely good either. For the most part, 625 just didn't care about anything other than sandwiches. 625 was obsessed with sandwiches. He loved eating them, of course. He'd wish for sandwiches when he was able to and fight to get sandwiches whenever he could, but he also became great at making them. It was kind of the only thing he was intrinsically motivated to do. Unfortunately, he's also a lazy coward, <laughs> but makes great sandwiches. Ham or tuna. But of course, even though 625 was a failure for Jumba, he didn't throw him out or disintegrate him. 625 actually became Jumba's assistant. In the Disney Adventure comics, he was depicted for some reason as a little blue alien who helped Jumba manage the other experiments. Since he was the precursor to Stitch, that kind of makes sense that he'd have a similar color to Stitch. But of course, in Lilo and Stitch the series, he has his own iconic yellow color. Now, 625 had a lot of fond memories serving Jumba. Like, 625 would recall to Gantu how 262, the experiment who turned out to be pure good, was always locked in the basement when Jumba's friends came over. Oh boy, was he embarrassed. <laughs> Supposedly, 625 was also able to be involved with the creation of Experiment 626. But unfortunately, the good times with Jumba wouldn't last long. In the lead up to the Galactic Armada arresting Jumba and seizing his lab, Jumba dehydrated his original 625 experiments into pods and placed them into a container computer for safekeeping. When 626 inevitably escaped custody and Jumba was sent to apprehend him, Jumba was able to smuggle all of his experiments to Earth, but they wouldn't stay safe there for long. Eventually, Hamsterveel hired Gantu to be his minion and sent him after Jumba in the experiments. And while he wasn't able to find the container computer at first, he was able to find one experiment pod, which turned out to be 625. Without knowing that 625 was not a serious threat, Hamsterveel rehydrated the pod in hopes of using him as a weapon. He believed 625 could be the key to getting Jumba to reveal the location of the experiments, and he hoped 625 would be able to help Gantu capture them as well. But 625 could not be bothered by Hamsterveel's commands. He had no fear of the gerbil-like alien. As soon as he was back in his hydrated form, he returned to making sandwiches and refused to intervene in the squabbling over the experiments. I mean, even when he was on board Gantu's ship, when it was shut down and on a path to crash land on Earth, 625 was just happy to be eating a shockingly good sandwich. Ah, grilled cheese. After Gantu's ship crash landed on Hawaii, it became very clear to Gantu and 625 that the ship was unable to be flown, which meant that they were stranded on Earth. And even though 625 didn't really care about the outcome of who captured the experiments, he decided to play along and accept his role as Gantu's sidekick. Looks like you and I are working together, huh? Sandwich? And right away, it seemed like a great deal for 625. With Gantu as a roommate, that meant Hamsterville was paying for their rent, their food, and even their cable subscription. The two aliens shared a bedroom, they'd play checkers and card games together, and sometimes just lounge around and watch TV. When Gantu was out hunting experiments, 625 typically kept himself busy by watching the Sandwich Channel and reading Sandwich Aficionado. And one time, he got himself a pet cockroach named Jimmy. Gantu, though, hated seeing 625 doing nothing around the ship. It's time you started pulling your weight around here. You see, Gantu saw 625's potential. I mean, he knew how powerful 625 could be because he fought Stitch every other day when he was going after the experiments. And he sometimes got so frustrated that 625 was willing to completely squander his abilities. Do you ever stop to think what you could accomplish if you gave up sandwiches? See, that's the diff between you and me. You are a fighter, while I am a lover. 
of sandwiches. But Gantu wasn't willing to put up with 625's excuses for long. He eventually started dragging 625 around on missions against his will, and 625 hated it. He especially did not like getting beaten up by Stitch, but there was one thing that allowed him to keep going through all of the pain, exhaustion, and embarrassment. I can't believe I did this for sandwiches. But then again, sandwiches. I mean, part of the frustration for 625 was the fact that he knew Gantu didn't actually need him along most of the time, and he made sure Gantu knew that. In hopes of being left behind, 625 made fun of Gantu a lot for needing him around. For the most part, he just got in Gantu's way. When it comes to hunting abominations, Gantu never loses. Except when you lose, which happens to be most of the time. Again, 625 just acted like he didn't care about anything at all. But the truth is that he did have some fun doing criminal work with Gantu. Bad guys win this round! Oh. <laughs> but unfortunately, those moments were few and far between at the start of 625's friendship with Gantu. Most of the time when 625 and Gantu were interacting, 625 was laughing at Gantu's expense. Like 625 snitched on Gantu to Hamsterville when he attempted to avoid hunting an experiment. 625 was also more than willing to kick Gantu in the keister when he was delusional and believed he was a chill guy named Uncle Chester. When Hamsterville demoted Gantu to 625's assistant, he was ecstatic to put Gantu to work helping him produce sandwiches, and he used the experiment named Swirly to hypnotize Gantu into performing humiliating stunts. I mean, a great example of how common it was for 625 to mess with Gantu is how 625 handled the TV. You see, 625 was so unwilling to help Gantu that he refused to record Gantu's favorite show. Record it for me? Well, I could do that, but I'm thinking the Sandwich Channel. <laughs> After years of being friends, though, 625 genuinely seemed to change his ways. I suppose I'll miss the big season finale. Want me to record it for you? You wouldn't mind? Hey, what are friends for? Now, I thought this was such a great moment because it seemed like a sign that 625 had actually grown to be attached to Gantu. But it turned out not to be the case. 625 just lied. He actually didn't record the show. And that made me so sad. I really thought he had changed. But what about your show? Sorry, didn't get it. But the truth is that sometimes 625 was just cruel to Gantu, especially when he target Gantu's biggest insecurities. Like he called him a failure. Your life is a boring failure. You said you wanted to hear it. I didn't think it would be so tedious. And 625 told him he was a loser. Uh, associating with this la loser is not doing wonders for my rep either. And he even made fun of his weight. Not funny. Looks nice. Helps disguise a few of those chins. The poor big dummy was consistently and brutally torn down by 625. That's why when Gantu got a sliver of power, he'd often get some revenge on 625 by turning him into his servant. 625 became Gantu's janitor when 627 was Gantu's sidekick. When Gantu had his experiment army, 625 was reduced to a butler and was used for target practice. And in an alternate future where Hamsterville took over the world and Gantu was able to rule Earth, 625 was Gantu's personal secretary. But in those moments where Gantu's ego would get out of control, 625 was definitely there to undermine him. Like he ratted out 627's weaknesses to Lilo, and he overthrew Gantu with a ton of his cousins when Gantu crowned himself as king. But for how dysfunctional their relationship was, 625 did truly care for Gantu and their friendship. Like, 625 makes Gantu sandwiches every day. When Gantu was turned into a baby by Experiment 151, he defended the little guy from Hamsterville. He took Gantu in when he was napping, and 625 would even talk with him through the tough times. Hey, 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 you obviously had a bad day. You want to talk about it? Plus, 625 was hurt when he felt like he was being replaced by Experiment 254. He did not like feeling like his contributions to Gantu were being underappreciated when Mr. Stenshi was showered with love and attention. Does he toast your bread for you? Hand slice your pickle? Does he? Does he? 625 was also legitimately hurt when Gantu suggested that he never actually enjoyed his sandwiches, which makes sense. I mean, so much of his identity is built around sandwiches. Of course, it would be devastating to hear that the one thing you actually love to do is something you're absolutely terrible at. Gantu Schmantu. Who needs him? Nothing but a pain in the patuki anyhow. Didn't even like my egg salad. And what I think is important to understand too is that Gantu was the only friend 625 had for a long time. One of the other hard things for 625 to accept was the rejection he faced after falling in love with Experiment 624. 
Her spell doesn't work on us, but we fell for her just the same. He struggled to cope with feelings of inadequacy and loneliness, and it didn't help that she chose Titch over him. I mean, that's never a fun experience to go through. But throughout that, he still had Gantu. Across the three years 625 lived on Earth, all in all, he had a pretty chill existence with someone who was a loyal pal, and he accepted that life. I guess the one place I belonged was with my blubber butt buddy, Gantu. But that era of 625's life seemed to fall apart when Gantu left him behind. You see, in a final effort to impress Dr. Hamsterville, Gantu went and broke him out of prison. With Hamsterville free, they were able to pressure Jumba into creating a new evil experiment named Leroy, and after creating an army of Leroy clones, Hamsterville began to take over the galaxy. But 625 wasn't included in those plans. Sure, 625 was technically free to make and eat as many sandwiches as he could ever dream, but lounging around, gorging himself, and creating distractions were going to fix the emptiness he felt. I think he was going through a similar experience to what Stitch did in the original movie. When Stitch had nothing left to destroy, it became clear to him that he had no greater purpose in his life. What must it be like to have nothing? And after 625 fully submitted to his lazy tendencies, he realized he had nothing to. He tried to claim that he would just convert Gantu's ship into a sandwich shop, but that's not what he actually needed. It was only when Lilo showed him some kindness by bringing him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and giving him the name Reuben that he finally began to see that there was meaning in being a part of an Ohana. You're number 625, the closest one to Stitch. You just have to stop making sandwiches and start making something of yourself. After being inspired by Lilo and her conviction to save the galaxy, Ruben sprung into action. In an instant, he allowed all of his powers to be unleashed, and in an afternoon, he was able to completely repair Gantu's ship for operation, which I think is absolutely hilarious. Gantu had been trying for years to get his ship in working order while he was stranded on Earth, and 625 literally just watched him struggle and failed that whole time, even though he knew how to get it up and running. That's just a classic 625 thing to do. Now using Gantu's ship, Reuben flew Lilo to the homeworld of the Galactic Alliance, Planet Turo, where they soon discovered that Hamsterville had already successfully overthrown the Grand Councilwoman. Gantu was then ordered to imprison the duo, but Reuben hoped that he could get Gantu off the path he was following. After so many arguments, jokes, and hurt feelings, Reuben finally decided to genuinely and openly support his friend by asking him to embrace the aloha spirit that he had found with Lilo. Lilo. And much to Reuben's delight, Gantu decided that his little sidekick was right. I'm breaking you two out of here. Aloha. Aloha! Whoa. With the help of Stitch, Jumba, and Pleakley, Reuben hitched a ride with his new friends back to Earth to defend his cousins against Hamsterville and the Leroy army. Once the battle broke out, Reuben fought the Leroys with sandwiches, and he inevitably jammed out on a saxophone to help exploit a defect within Leroy and his clones. Playing Aloha Oi successfully deactivated Hamster Veal's army. For being a part of the team that saved the galaxy, Gantu was offered the honor of returning to his position as captain of the Galactic Armada. But he had one request. He wanted to keep his favorite little trog by his side. I'd like to request Experiment 625, <coughs> I mean Reuben, as my galley officer. No kidding? I've grown rather fond of your egg salad. Experiment 625 may have began his life as a lazy, unmotivated, and sandwich-loving alien, but through his friendships, he allowed himself to rise to his full potential. He pursued the path of good, he embraced an ohana, and he decided that his one true place where he belonged was as a supportive sidekick for his best friend. Fun people, if you're interested in getting exclusive weekly live streams with me, early access to new videos, and the ability to chat in our community's private Discord server, consider supporting the channel over on Patreon, which is linked down below. I'm Isaac Carlson, thanks for watching, and have a magical day.